Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video, I'm going to be filming my review and three looks on the ColourPop Going Coconuts collection. I actually didn't get everything from this collection. I only bought the palettes and the four lip tints. However, I will still give you guys my thorough review on everything from swatches, comparisons, and then obviously my three looks at the end with the palette. So if you guys are interested in all of that, then just continue watching. All right, so I thought we would start this review off with some product info just because I didn't purchase everything I want to give you like a rundown of what's actually in this collection so first things first is the going coconut palette this is a nine pan palette it's kind of like another monochromatic palette to be honest but this is 12 US dollars and then we also have two lip tint bundles and these are 12 US dollars each however you can purchase the single shades on its own for seven US dollars each also in this collection there are two press bronzers which are eight US dollars one coconut face milk which is 14 US dollars one lippy balm which is six US dollars and there's a trio of super shock eyeshadows for 15 US dollars so yeah I think with that being said let's start talking about the going coconuts eyeshadow palette first off when I saw this I was super excited I love anything coconuts I don't like the actual coconut but I love the scent of coconut and how amazing if this palette smelled like coconuts that would have been the dream and when I saw this palette I actually really like the look of it I know it's a really basic standard palette with a lot of neutrals but I'm a neutral warm tone kind of gal at heart and when I see a palette that looks this pretty a lot of beautiful matte shades and then you only have the three metallics it looks pleasing to my eyes and the aesthetics of everything coconuts it was very pleasing so when I got this palette I did have some kind of high expectation from it and after playing around with it and after doing my three looks I don't like it as much as I thought I would first let's talk about the pros so the pros is the selection of shades you have a highlighting shade you have a satin shade to highlight with and also a metallic shade to highlight with you get two transition shadows and pretty much two medium tones and one dark matte to really deepen up a look and then you also have these two pretty metallics one's more of a medium and one's a little bit darker so you kind of have everything from your light shades to your mediums to your dark so I think with the three looks that I created I wanted to showcase to you guys that you can create a very daytime glam to a more dramatic smoky eye and then to a cut crease like I am wearing today you can also create a very daytime and natural go-to look so it hits all those points and that aspect for me but after playing around this palette I just feel like this palette was very very neutral a lot of the mattes especially pull very neutral on my skin tone and I find that when I play with neutral shades it almost looks gray and ashy on me in a bad way if you know what I mean and I don't know why I just feel like with the transition shadows I did have an issue with blending with Colourpop shadows you guys know I'm always a big fan of the formula but for some reason I think maybe because it's so neutral on my eyes I just had a hard time with it I didn't really feel a hundred percent confident in the three looks that I did and all three looks I was just like yeah it's all right I don't think it's like looks that I'm like screaming and I love but it's not like my worst looks I've ever created I didn't feel like confident in me and I really do think it's because of those neutral tones and obviously when you look at the palette it does look a little bit neutral but I thought it would be a little bit warmer so that's definitely a personal preference thing I think if you wanted neutral shadows then this is the palette for you because again it has all the range from mattes to metallics light to dark and then if you like neutral tones and this is a really great palette for you but if you don't really pull to that neutral almost cool tone side then you probably won't like this palette like me but in saying that another pro about this palette is that when I was finding my comparisons for this palette I couldn't find many comparisons at all a lot of the comparisons that you will see are actually just comparisons they don't even look similar you know I just wanted to give it to you guys and compare it to something at least so you can kind of get like a general gist of how neutral this does pull and I did have a hard time finding comparisons for this palette another pro is that I used every single shade in this palette everything had its purpose I think actually a lot of you guys that will like it because I do see comments from you guys where you say you do want more neutral and cool tone palettes so this is it for you you'll see in my comparison that it does not compare and when I compare it to more warmer shades you'll see how more neutral this does pull it's just personally not for me and I think 
because I had that expectation, I was a little bit more disappointed because when you have high expectations, there's more room for disappointment. That's just my personal preference and what I like to see on myself. I mean, you guys might see the three looks and be like, Judy, you suit neutral tones so well, but that's what you guys see. And what I see on me and what I feel confident in is not a neutral tone eyeshadow palette so yeah I just thought it would pull a little bit more warm but it's not but that's fine it's still a great palette and I'm sure I'll get my use out of it I think it's a time and place for warm neutral and cool looks all right and now we move on to the just a tint lip bundles we have coconut kiss which has shaka and waikiki and then we have shall we dance and this has island time and nude beach you can get it in the bundles you do save two dollars but if you don't want to get in the bundles you can buy the shades individually so let's start off with the lip bundle coconut kiss and talk about the individual shades so we have shaka and waikiki i did find some comparisons for this so if you want to see that there's timestamp down below where you can skip to the comparisons these shades are different from the comparisons it is definitely a different shade from what we have already seen from the just a tint line and i'm glad that they came out with four new shades because if you guys know the just a tint lip crowns are my favorite lip formula from ColourPop. i love these so 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 much i do think these shades are very very pretty but none of these shades like out of the four are my new go-to shades i think rise and shine give me some more and z boys is always going to be my top three. These are all very wearable shades in my opinion. We have Waikiki with a little bit more warmer but Shaka definitely is a little bit more cool toned so if you have been looking for more like neutral lip colors then maybe definitely check these out. The lip tints are beautiful formulas it just comes down to what kind of shades you like to see on your lips so hopefully my lip swatches will help you guys with that. And then in the lip bundle Shall We Dance we have Island Time and Nude Beach. Island Time is the only shade that I couldn't find a comparison for and that's the shade I'm wearing right now and I think this is a really great addition to the Just a Tint family because it's the nudist one. When I saw this I was like I don't know how I feel about it it's like a very like caramel nude but once it's on the lips I think it's a very very wearable nude lip color. This one is actually a little bit more warm and I like that. I think this is a really great nude like you know a true definition of a nude lip color and I think this will look great on more golden skin tones. And then we have Nude Beach. I don't think it's a very special shade I think we have seen something a little bit similar from what we have in the Just a Tint family but nonetheless it is all very beautiful shades very cohesive everything works well with the eyeshadow palette and they are all great wearable everyday shades so yeah those were all the items that I picked up hopefully you guys enjoyed that little review and found that helpful we now can move on to the swatches then the comparisons and then the three looks and the three looks I will swatch all four lip tints with each look so you guys will see the lip swatches then so yeah Hope you guys will enjoy all of that. So let's roll the clips. To get started with the first look, I'm going to take the shade Lovely Bunch and this is going to be my transition shadow. I'm just going to work that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions, blending that up towards my brow bone. I'm also taking this shadow onto my lower lash line as well just to get the general color underneath my eyes. Next up, I am taking the shade Shell Yeah, and I am going to work this in the outer third of my eyes to really build up that outer corner first. And you just kind of want to pack on the color there, and then once you have most of the pigmentation there, you want to start blending it up towards your transition shadow. 
And now I am taking Nutty and I'm doing exactly the same thing that I did with Xiao Ye where I am just working that at the outer third of my eyes just really deepening out that outer corner but I'm also going to take Nutty onto my lower lash line as well but this time I'll be taking more of a definer brush and really press this up against my bottom lash line Now I am taking the shade Coco Crush. I am using this shadow wet and I'm going to place that right at the inner third of my lid space. I love this formula from Colourpop where it's like a metallic shadow but there's a lot of little specks of reflex of glitters and the way it hits the light is super beautiful. Like this shadow is very eye-catching and I just love this formula. I wish Colourpop would do it more often. But yeah, just putting that right at the inner third of my eyes. I'm also going to take that in towards my inner corners to highlight that area Now I'm taking my BFF liquid liner in the shade Grande and I'll be using this to create my wing and lastly, taking my Artisy in Modester Eyeliner in the shade Coffee I'm going to use this to tightline my entire bottom waterline Alright you guys, so this is the first look completed. For my lashes, I am wearing the House of Lashes Natalia Light. And for my final lip pairing, I am wearing the Just a Tint Lip Crayon in the shade Shaka. For the first look, I wanted to create something simple but still glam at the same time. So for me personally, I feel like this is a really pretty daytime glam. So yeah, it's a very simple eye look, very easy to do, very bulletproof method. I hope you guys enjoyed this first look. Alright, so to get started with the second look, I'm going to be taking the shade Cool Lada and I'm going to use this as my transition shadow, just working that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions as always and making sure we are blending that up towards our brow bone to make sure that we are seeing this shadow peek through underneath all of the darker shadows that we're going to place on top. I next go into the shade Get Kraken and I'm going to pack this onto my lid space. I'm going to pack this color on first to really get the pigmentation there and then once I see the pigmentation is there, I'm going to blend that up towards my crease area and into the transition shadow. Get Kraken is a special kind of shade because it does have a matte base with lots of specks of glitters in it. So if you are packing on the color, you will see those little specks but once you blend, all of those glitters, particles will disappear. So it does technically work as a matte shadow. I'm also going to take Get Kraken onto my lower lash line as well, just sweeping that from the outer corner right to the inner corner and making sure at the outer corner we are connecting those shadows at that point. And now we are taking the shade Nutty and I'm going to be doing exactly the same thing by just packing this shadow onto my lid space first and then once you feel like all that pigmentation is there, you can blend it up. But with this shadow, I'm not going to blend it up all the way into my crease. I just kind of want to keep it a little bit lower so that way we can see that gradient smoky eye. Taking a definer brush and the shade Nutty again, I'm going to press this up against my bottom waterline to really smoke out that lower lash. Now I am taking the shade Da Coco and I'm just going to literally put this all over my lid space just wherever the matte shadows are. I'm mainly going to keep it closer to my lid and not so much into my crease. Around the crease area you just want to kind of like diffuse it out, blend it up but you mainly want that shadow onto your lids. It's just going to give this like matte smoky eye a bit more dimension and Da Coco has a lot of beautiful specks of glitters in there like silver and blue almost so it looks very very pretty against the darker shadows. I then took the shade Shredded and I used this to highlight my inner corners and also my brow bone. And to kind of complete the look off, I will be creating a wing. So I'm using a liquid liner to align my upper lash line and then I'll take my gel liner to create my wing. I know it's a lot of eyeliners but 
that's just what I like to do for my wing. Because the look is so intense and smoky, I thought a wing eyeliner would suit this perfectly. And then lastly, just taking my Artisy In Moisture Eyeliner in the shade Coffee, I'm going to use this to tightline my entire bottom waterline. Alright you guys, this is going to complete the first look. I hope you guys enjoyed it. For my lashes today, I am wearing the Petite Cosmetics Luxe Fake Mink Lashes in the style Diva. And for my lip pairing, I went with the Just a Tint Lip Crayon in the shade Nude Beach. I love how the smoky eye turned out. It's very glam and dramatic, sultry and sexy. So I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Alright, and now on to the final look. I will be starting off with the shade Lovely Bunch, and this is going to be my transition shadow. I'm just going to work that straight into my crease using windshield wiping motions as always. You can see that I am bringing it quite high up because we are creating a half cut crease, so I do want this transition shadow to peek through. Next up, I am taking the Shake It Kraken. I'm actually going to focus this color at the outer third of my eyes, but then I kind of like bring all of that shadow in towards the inner part of my crease, and it almost goes all over my lid at this point, just because I do want some depth around my inner crease area, that way the half cut crease can have something to contrast against. And then I take the shade Nutty and I pretty much do exactly the same thing. I don't bring it as high up as Get Kraken, but I still bring it up towards my crease area. So now I am just taking my P. Louise eyeshadow base and I'm going to use this to cut out my half cut crease. I first applied the P. Louise base towards the inner third of my eyes and just kind of following along the cut crease line and following that curve. And then I'll take a thinner brush to really define and cut the crease out. I will be using the shade Palm Reader Wit and I'm going to apply that on top of the P. Louise eyeshadow base to really cut out the crease. I then just took my liquid liner and lined my lash line and then my gel eyeliner to create my classic wing. As always with cut creases, I think a wing eyeliner is just the most suitable. I'm going back into the shade Get Kraken and I'm going to wash this all over my bottom lash line. I'm just going to sweep that from the outer corner right to the inner corner. And kind of at the outer corner, I'm going to connect it to my wing just to make the look look a little bit more cohesive. And then taking a nutty, I'm going to press this up against my bottom waterline to balance the eyes out. And then I'm just going to take the shade Shredded and I'm going to use this to highlight my inner corners and also my brow bone. And finally, to complete the look, just taking a brown eyeliner. This one is from Odyssey In. I'm going to use this to tightline my entire bottom waterline. Alright you guys, this is the final look completed. You know I had to do a half cut crease with this palette. But for my lashes today, I am wearing the Natalia Light Lashes from House of Lashes. And for my lip pairing, I am wearing the Just a Tint Lip Crayon in the shade Island Time. 
All right, you guys, that is going to complete today's review. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up for me. I would appreciate it so much if you did. As always, let me know your thoughts down below on the collection and what did you guys pick up? Have you guys tried out the bronzers? What do you guys think of it? Do you think I will love it? Because the bronzers were probably the other thing that I was like eyeing out. So yeah, just let me know what you guys think on the collection, which looks for your favorites. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye!